Um, kidney stone is one of the very common uh, urology problems in Singapore. It affects both uh, males and females, although many more males suffer from it, and can affect people from all ages, from even very young children and elderly people. Some of the common signs and symptoms that we see are one, pain over the back. It can be on the right back or on the left back. Usually this pain is very acute, very intense, and may sometimes bring a patient to the emergency department. Other times, when the stone causes slow and gradual obstruction of the kidney, the pain may be very mild or very subtle, and this may go on for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Next, in cases of um, injury or stone-related injury to the urinary system, it may cause bleeding, and bleeding can be bright red blood in the urine or mild blood detected on urine tests. In some cases, even though the kidney stone can be very big and may be causing damage to the kidney, the patient may not experience any pain at all. As for causes of kidney stone, 90% of kidney stones in Singapore are due to dehydration, which means the person does not drink enough water. An adequate water intake means at least 2 litres or 8 glasses of water a day. In 10% of our patients with kidney stones, they are due to other causes such as a blood disorder, where they have an abnormally high level of calcium, phosphate or uric acid in their bloodstream. These three chemicals are the main minerals in stone formation. Consumption of excessive um, uh, daily food that contains calcium, such as dairy products, cheese, anchovy, coupled with high consumption of high uric acid containing food, such as alcohol, coupled with inadequate fluid intake of less than a litre a day, would certainly put a person at high risk of developing kidney stones. The doctor will again get a history from the patient and the history alone is usually very suggestive of stone. Where the patient points to on the body will also suggest because the kidneys are located behind our back, away from the backbone. Next, the doctor will usually do a urine test and from the urine test, we will be looking for possibility of blood in the urine. Then, the doctor may do some form of scanning for a patient. They can do an ultrasound or they can do a CT scan. These more specific scans will tell us the status of the kidney, the health of the kidney, and also show us stones if they are stones. It will also show us the severity of the stones, whether the stones are one, two or multiple, or whether these stones are causing blockage and damage to the kidney. So in this group of patients, a specialist will have to do an investigation, either a blood and a urine test to determine the levels of these chemicals and if it are deemed to be high, then these patients have to be started on long-term medications to lower the levels of these minerals. Some patients will have high calcium in their blood due to inborn uh, blood disorders. Some of them have high calcium due to um, chronic renal disease or chronic renal failure. Some of them may be due to an abnormal growth in their body, such as an organ called the parathyroid. The parathyroid are very small organs, minuscule organs located around the neck region. So a specialist will have to do very specific tests to look for all these rare but possibly treatable conditions if they are deemed to be causing recurrent kidney stones. Um, there are many forms of treatment for kidney stones depending again on the severity of the stone, namely the size, the number and whether it's causing obstruction. If the stones are very small and not causing danger to the kidney, sometimes this stone will just pass naturally with a passage of urine with a bit of medications and pain relief. Patient will also have to drink lots of water to attempt to flush these stones out and they will need to drink at least two, if not three liters of water a day. In cases where the stones are in the kidney and they are of decent size and causing mild obstruction, these stones can be shock wave. We use a shock wave machine that is applied over the skin of the patient without any intrusion into the body 
and these shock waves are then delivered into the kidney and into the stones where the stones are shattered into smaller particles and they come out as sand particles. Lastly, if the stones are in the urine tube and causing near complete obstruction to the kidney, then these stones are treated as an emergency and the patient will undergo a minor endoscopy procedure whereby a small tube is passed into the urine tube and then the laser or lasering process of the stone is performed. We use a laser device to smash the stone into very fine particles, remove the particles and unobstruct the kidney. So these are some of the common surgical procedures we do for kidney stones. So surgery is usually indicated when there is acute obstruction, where there is a severe pain and when there is a threat to the health of the kidney. In shockwave treatment, it's usually less intrusive and results are almost as good as surgery. Shockwave is relatively safe. It is done um, in the x-ray department where a patient just lies on the bed. The treatment is mildly uncomfortable where the patient is then uh, given mild sedation. The stones and the kidney are well visualized during the treatment either by x-ray guidance or ultrasound guidance to make sure that the shock wave are directly targeted at the stone and no other organs. The risk of side effects such as mild bleeding is low. Of course, patients will have mild blood in the urine for first one or two days after treatment and this blood in the urine observation will resolve after a couple of days. As for the laser treatment, it is a very precise treatment. It is an endoscopy or scope treatment where there is really no cut made in the body. Therefore, the recovery is fast, pain is very manageable, and most patients can return to work within one or two days. All these procedures are done as day surgery procedures. In other cases, the patients will, advise, will be advised on a dietary advice, such as if they have high uric acid, then they'll be advised to avoid food with high uric acid, such as alcohol consumption or internal organs. In some cases where patients have high calcium levels, we may even need to administer some long-term medications to lower these calcium levels in their blood and in the urine. The risks are mainly, number one, related to whether the fragments or the stones are well fragmented enough. In shockwave, we deliver shockwave from outside the body. There is a limitation to the amount of energy we can deliver. Whereas with laser surgery, we are within the body and we are in control of the laser and we are able to deliver very high energy. In laser, we are able to crack almost every stone known to man. Whereas in shockwave, we are, about, we are able to crack about 80% of stones. So the main uh, side effect I would gather would be one, in some cases where the stones are too big or too hard and it cannot be treated by shockwave. Two, in laser surgery, it involves a form of mild general anesthesia and involves some form of instrumentation to the body which may cause mild discomfort for a short period of time for the patient. The most important, important single preventive measure for stone disease is adequate hydration. And in particularly our climax and weather, most of our people in Singapore will need to drink at least two litres of water a day or eight glasses of water a day. Secondly, if they have been told by a doctor during a routine health examination that they have blood in the urine, they need to be investigated. They need to have a scan to look at the kidneys to ensure that there are no stones. If they are stones, these stones can then be treated in an early manner. And lastly, if these stones are causing obstruction, then of course they need to be referred to a urologist who can then remove or unobstruct these stones.